Just do one more thing for me. Draw your blade and bring it gently across your throat. Anders, make her stop. Let go of my friends. How did you? Oh, shit. Spare me, Messer. Oh, it's nice having uh, someone with a huge, vengeful spirit inside them. What foul magic was that? Blood and desire in equal measure. An art I learned from... elsewhere. Blood magic, then? Yes, Messer. Please don't kill me. You're going to answer all my questions. And if there's even a hint of magic... Tirani put me here. To send biddable Templar recruits to the Sanctuary. Three Spear Alley in the Undercity. I enchanted Wilmot and Keren weeks ago. But after they left these walls, I know not what came of them. Please, let me live. It's not my fault. It was all Tirani's idea. Oh, we're so quick to blame someone else, are we? Tell me about Tirani. She put me up to this. She said we can recreate the ancient Imperium. That mages can rule again, not serve. She says the Templars cannot hold against us if we stand up and fight. This base of yours. How many other mages are there? Any other defenses? People go in and out all the time. Sometimes a handful, sometimes more. There are traps. Magical traps. There's a hidden switch at the front. It turns them off. That, that's all I know. Well, if there's any mage in here that needs to be locked up and watched by the Templars, it's you. The Templars are coming for you. No more of your tricks. We must purge the Sanctuary. The mages must be dealt with. Uh, I'm afraid I have to agree with you this time with Fenris. These look like they're very dangerous mages. Okay, let's see. The other part of business in here, like I said before, is we need to get some clues about that one man's missing wife. And she frequented this brothel, and in particular, this a um, worker in the brothel. <laughs> Today's my rest day, but I'll make an exception for you. What can I say? Why work if you're not working hard? Jathan, have you seen <laughs> Nanette lately? Nanette? Not for several weeks, which is a shame. I enjoy her company. I hear she finally left her worthless husband. Good for her. I just wish she'd said goodbye. Did she tell you she left her husband? No. I just hope that's what she did. Ghislaine only wants her for her family's wealth. Ninette's a jewel. Elegant, worldly, just the perfect level of depraved. Ghislaine doesn't deserve her. Do you think Ninette has come to harm? I hope not. Everyone loves Ninette. Sometimes twice a night. <laughs> Ghislaine's the only one who might hurt her. And he doesn't have the balls for it. Ghislaine knew about you and Ninette. Did he talk to you? The man is incapable of talking. He came here, yelled at me, called me a dirty knife ear, among other things, and accused me of corrupting his wife. We had him thrown out. Were you hoping Nanette would leave Ghislaine for you? Of course not. I know my place. I offer a service, that's all. Anyway, there was someone else looking for Nanette. A Templar. I believe his name was Emmerich. He wouldn't sleep with me either. I can't see why a Templar would be interested in anyone who isn't a mage. Any chance Ninette's an apostate? Well, she certainly cast a spell on me. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if Ninette was a mage, I think Emmerich would have said so. Perhaps Emmerich knows something we don't. Emmerich said he'd continue his investigation in Darktown. You could see if he's still there. And if you find Nanette, 
Tell her to drop by and see me sometime. This is a man who enjoys his work. And you can uh, <clears throat> engage his services as well, if you wish. Although, um, again, it's not as interesting as you might think. It's just for a quick laugh. But on the other hand, uh, Hawk, as we have created her so far here in the game, I don't think she'd necessarily be very interested in him at this time. So, let's be on our way here. We're actually going to go off to search for this Dark Mage stronghold. And then we'll also follow up on where Nanette might be. And it turns out that both of them are in Darktown, so let's head there now. Is the one that I want to do first. Yeah. It's a closer one, so that works out for us. Ah, yes, here is the Dark I Mage's Sanctuary. Food. Again. Oh, that's dark. We should go carefully. Who knows what this many blood mages may have summoned to defend themselves. Trap! Oh, thank no. you, Hawk. Actually, didn't uh, Ayuna say something about a switch that turned off the traps? We should keep an eye out for that. Let's see if I can... Oh, there's a lot of them down there. Let's make it rain. Come on, you abomination. Bring it on. Another rage demon. Alright, is there a switch around here? I don't see one off the top of the... off the bat. I do see a corpse with some money in it. And some random loot crates. Getting some nice recipes, so we'll have to have a look at that at some point when we get to our home. Ah, we got a new ingredient here, death root. Death root has been used in magic and potion making for centuries. It's a fragile-looking plant with a thin stalk and purple flowers, which fruits once a year, developing bright red fleshy pods that cause disorientation and dizziness if ingested. There are two varieties. The more common Arcanist death root was first found by Archon. Hadrianus, when he discovered it growing on several dead slaves. Ugh. The other, Lunatic's death root, is most commonly associated with the story of the courtesan Melusine, who sought revenge on a powerful magister and his family. She harvested the plant, baked it into small pies for the magister's banquet, and presented them to the magister at the banquet. All the guests were seized by terrifying hallucinations after eating the pies and tore each other to pieces. Nice. <laughs> I have a feeling that that's used in poisons. Oh, we have a book on the veil. That's a pretty lengthy sh subject, I'm sure. I detest this notion that the veil is some manner of invisible curtain that separates the world of the living from the world of the spirits. Whether it be called the Fade or the Beyond is a matter of racial politics I refuse to indulge in at the moment. There is no this side and that side when it comes to the veil. One cannot think of it as a physical thing or a barrier or even a shimmering wall of holy light. Thank you very much for that image, your perfection. I think he's addressing the divine there. Think of the veil instead as openings, opening one's eyes. Before you open them, you saw our world as you see it now. Static, solid, unchanging. Now that they are open, you see our world as the spirits see it. Chaotic, ever-changing, 
a realm where the imagined and the remembered have as much substance as that which is real. More, in fact. A spirit sees everything as defined by will and memory, and this is why they are so very lost when they cross the veil. In our world, imagination has no substance. Objects exist independently of how we remember them or what emotions we associate with them. Mages alone possess the power to change the world with their minds, and perhaps this forms the nature of a, of a demon's attraction to them. Who can say? Regardless, the act of passing through the veil is much more about changing one's perceptions than a physical transition. The veil is an idea. It is the act of transition itself. And it is only the fact that both living beings and spirits find the transition difficult that gives the veil any credence as a physical barrier at all. All right. That was written in a past age. Although I'm sure throughout antiquity, lots of people have been trying to figure out exactly what the veil is. Oh, yay. More spirits. Or demons, however you'd say it. Another dead corpse with junk. Get over. Oh, just another one. Oops. And skeletons. Some of them are skeleton archers, so I'm gonna take them down first. You go boom. Okay. Start looting the field here. There's not too many more left. Almost to our destination. I don't like the looks of this. So that should do it. So useful to have a rogue in the lead. What in the world is that? How wonderful! More vessels for our experiments. Where is Karen? Perhaps the demons will find one of you suitable. Always the demon thing. Can't you people say no? I am not some hopeless waif that ran crying to a demon. I sought them out and embraced them. The demons gave her one heck of a lipstick color. Why have you taken the recruits? Demons can inhabit much more than mages and corpses. With assistance, they can control anyone I ask. Any Templar. Any noble. Any well-meaning meddler. I sense a threat in that. You do know I cut a path through your abominations, right? Good, good. The demons like spirit. If a few more Templars fall to the demons, we can seed chaos in their ranks. How many abominations can they discover amongst their own before it drives the Knight Commander crazy? Tell me where Karen is. The experiments need so much fuel, you see. So many living vessels are found wanting. Useless vessels can still feed the compost heap, so it's not a complete waste. You're worse than a monster. Goodbye. Kill the vessels only if you must! <laughs> Oh, nice move by Fenris right there. I think he just cleared out those three mages in one big swooping hit. Ah, there's the leader right there. Looks like she was being controlled by a desire demon. Guess I'm not too surprised. Oh, there's Karen. 
So he was the one stuck in that weird swirly thing. And since he just said something, I'm assuming he's probably still alive. Is it... is it over? Karen. Yes, that's my name. Oh, thank the Maker. I thought he had abandoned me. Do not trust him. He's likely possessed. The cage has opened. Thank Andraste. What do you remember about how you got here? I... I was with a lady. And then things got fuzzy. Nightmares, then. On fire for days. A demon laughing. The naked lady with her razor claws in my chest. I'd wake and hear screams. Maybe my own. I'm sorry. It's all a tangle in my head. Meryl? You know something about this. Is he possessed? I don't know. It's... It's clean. There's no scent of demons in his blood. If there's even the slightest chance you're possessed, the Templars need to know. No, no, I'm me, I swear. Don't tell the Templars. I... I don't know what they do to me. Please, I need to go back. Tell them I'm alright. Tell my sister. I... I must go. When you talk to Sir Cullen, maybe downplay the blood magic angle. We don't need the Templars cracking down even harder. Fair enough. Yeah, it's kind of a fine line you have to walk. Meryl doesn't think that he's possessed, but then, if he was and she just can't detect it, will he end up sowing chaos into the Templars? Perhaps increasing Knight Commander Meredith's paranoia even more. So no easy answers here. But that concludes that section of the mission. We'll have a little denouement as we go in back to the gallows. But since we're in Darktown, let's go ahead and move on to the next stage of finding out where Nanette has gone. And that's down here. At the meeting place, as they say. Although, here's another death route. And that was just enough experience to put us over the top. So let's have a look at what we can increase. Um, I'll do that, and we should be able to open up the next series of complicated locks when we uh, cross Cunning of 30. And what can we do with our arrow skills? We still need to wait. I want to improve the Storm of Arrows, because I use that a lot. So let's improve the shadowing arrow. Let's put some elemental power into it. And if this sewer area looks kind of familiar, it's because it's another one of the reused dungeons, unfortunately. It's like some Carta thugs are attacking the Templar here. Coming from all directions. <laughs> That's good advice in a fight, I'd say. I thank you, Sirrah, for coming along when you did. I am Emmerich. Just the person I was looking for. I need to speak with you about Nanette. Ah, Ghislaine de Carac's wife. Her disappearance interested me. I tried looking into it. However, the investigation has been a waste of time. Did you learn nothing? Most people just say she left her husband. This all started when Meren, 
One of our circle mages disappeared. I found it odd. She was a bit older and hardly adventurous. Then I heard about Ninette and two other missing women. Between the circle and Ghislaine, is it any wonder these women ran away? I think the disappearances are connected, and I suspect foul play is involved. Mages routinely flee the circle. Perhaps Marin just wanted freedom. She had always been loyal. She received lilies from an unknown suitor, and some of us thought she may have gone to meet him. Perhaps her disappearance is linked? Doesn't the Circle use phylacteries to keep track of its mages? We followed her phylactery to a foundry, but found nothing. I had heard of sympathizers smuggling mages through Darktown, so came here hoping to pick up the trail. But no trace of Merrin. And as you've seen, asking the locals hasn't made me very popular. Have you mentioned any of this to the city guard? They say there's no proof the disappearances are connected. They think the women just left home. That it happens all the time. People don't just disappear. Perhaps they were murdered or kidnapped. We found no bodies, no ransom notes. Those women just vanished. Can I assist your investigation? It's no longer my investigation, Sirrah. You may take over if you wish. This battle showed that I'm no longer the warrior I used to be. I know when to walk away. Here, take my findings. Perhaps you can make more use of them. I'm going back to the gallows. I'm too old for this. A foundry in Lowtown. I should look into that. And indeed we will. But I think first we should head over to the gallows. So that'll be our next stop here. The recent development with the possessed Templars, I must say, provides a little bit of a strong counterpoint to Fenris's point of view. Because if other people other than mages can end up being possessed by demons, then that lessens his argument that mages are fundamentally more dangerous because of their ability to be possessed. So let's see if Karen has made it back safely. Did I hear correctly? You are an abomination. Why don't you shout? I don't think everyone heard you. <laughs> Do you see yourself as harmless, then? An abomination who would never harm anyone? Like ripping someone's heart out of his chest? I did that at the behest of no demon. So we agree that it doesn't take a demon for someone to be a vicious killer. Good. Hmm, I guess that's another point for Anders. Blood mages have infiltrated your ranks. They've been implanting your recruits with demons. Sweet blood of Andraste. De demons? Did you say something about the recruits and demons? I didn't want to tell you, Masha. They... they were horrible. Those mages see the rest of us as ants to be crushed. They won't stop until they've destroyed the Chantry and the Templars forever. <laughs> the situation is dealt with. Who is right and wrong is academic. Wrong! This is no stuffy scholar's debate. This is the central fact of the world that Andraste recognized. <sighs> but I will not preach. Thank you for your service. I will relieve Karen of his commission now, pending investigation. If there is any chance he still harbors a demon in him... No, you can't really think that. Karen's fine. He's safe. He is not to blame. But tell that to the victims if it turns out that our suspicions are correct. Please, sir. I tried to resist. I never took anything they offered. I... I need this position or my sister can't eat. I've been training for five years. Alright, so once again... Hawk is pretty... is... 
compromiser when it comes to these situations, so we really should take, I guess, the middle road. Karen did nothing wrong. You can't strip his livelihood on the off chance Tirani succeeded. Please, Knight Captain. I'll prove I'm loyal. Ask me anything. My brother's a good man, sir. He would never succumb to a demon. Perhaps it is best to keep our enemies close. We can watch him far better here than in the city. So be it. If he has shown no sign of demonic possession in ten years' time, Karen will become eligible for full knighthood. Thank you, Sarah. Again. But without a full knighthood, Karen's pay is so small. I do not know if I can reward you as you deserve. I will handle that, miss. You have done the Order a great service. We will not forget it. Alright, I'm sure, yeah, Fenris rivalry, I'm sure he would want us to just make sure that we locked him away forever, but Hawk's not going to do that. Okay, so now we need to go... Yeah, we need to go down to Low Town at night. Still on the trail of Nanette here. And it looks like she may have fallen in with a serial killer, from what the uh, last Templar told us. Come around this way... Yep, the Foundry District. That's where we want to be. It's not just any Foundry, it's the Dark Foundry. Ominous music plays here. I saw a staff. Whoever that was, was a mage. And, sure enough, probably not a very nice mage, considering there are demons all over this place. Anything interesting from the demon? A oh, ring. Got several rings here. We probably should start distributing them. I got a happy arrow for someone. If anyone's left, but I don't think there is for much longer. Boom! We won. Deep. We did. Summoned by another mage, no doubt. That's my suspicion as well, Fenris. Okay, any other loot here? Nope. Let's distribute those rings before I end up forgetting again. Let's see, Fenris... Anyone just missing a ring? Yes. Attack, attack, mana regeneration. That's what we want. And this is 16 and 15. Definitely want to give one of these to Fenris. Let's see. Physical damage and stamina. Yeah. There we go. And we need to level up Meryl. So, magic, willpower. Let's improve her Petrify. Because that is still a darn useful ability. More of you. Boom. What do you think you're doing? I think it's over. Do you think it's over? Okay, sack and a barrel. Almost sounds like the name of an inn. Fantasy style inn. Welcome to the sack and barrel. 
Ugh, speaking of sacks. Nanette's ring and a bunch of bloody bones. That's not good. That ring looks or lesion. A severed hand, a ring, and a pile of bones. Emmerich will want to see this. And I should bring the ring to Ghislaine. It might belong to Nanette. Yeah, I'm starting to doubt that Ghislaine really has anything to do with this. Oops. Last bit of loot here. That's some boots. Okay, so now... We will finish this up. And I believe... That should conclude... Our various, uh... Knight and Templar missions for this act. I may do a couple little odd and end missions to end out this chapter here, though. First, I'm going to find my way back to the city map. Hey, Samson. Still hanging out looking for his fix of lyrium, I guess. Okay, we'll go to the gallows first, and then we'll go back to High Town. You might want to see this. This was left in the foundry you mentioned in your notes. I was also attacked by shades. These are human bones. <sighs> then there is no chance of finding Meren alive, or any of the others. This isn't over. I'm going to get the bastard that did this. I know how you feel, Sirrah. Surely those in power will believe you now. I will bring this to the city guard immediately. It should be enough to convince them the disappearances are worth investigating. Alright, so the other two members of our party now get some leveling up. Oh, what should I give you, Fenris? Let's improve your shattering blow. And for Anders, I'll give you some more healing abilities, I think. Alright, last stop, High Town. This ring is all I have to return to you. I'm sorry. Oh. Ninette's wedding ring. Yes. Look at the engraving. Forever faithful. Forever yours. Oh. Written in happier times. Where did you find it? <laughs> we could be really blunt, but, uh... I don't know, perhaps not, now is not the time to be particularly blunt. Just know that she will not return. <sighs> it's better this way. Our marriage has been in shambles for more than a decade. I'll send the ring to her family. With luck, it will appease them. Thank you for all your help, Sarah. Make her watch over. Welcome, All right. Well, good luck to you then. So let's check our journal here really quick. And da 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 da. Yep. Okay. We're in pretty good shape here. Um. 
That finishes all the quests for this act that have the theme of the mages and templars. So what I'm going to do now is uh, there is one companion quest that's currently available. That's from Meryl. So I'm going to go to her place. We'll have that conversation. And then I'll change up my party for a new theme of quests that we're going to start with in the next chapter. So let's head to Meryl's place. What's up, Meryl? This city is amazing. Do you know I saw someone get mugged? Right outside. It was fascinating. Everything happens here all at once. How does anyone keep it all straight? Someone has jumped outside your door and that's exciting? It must be the alien age greeting. Hasn't happened to me yet, though. They must not like me. <laughs> It's so busy here. So many things just get... lost. Do you miss the Danish? I miss her and Pival stories. The creaking of Aravels in the breeze. The city is so busy and confusing. And the elves here are not like my clan. But I'll get used to Kirkwall in time. The Templars haven't found you, have they? I've been careful. Even among the Dalish. Keepers never work magic in public. And I think the Templars don't even see me. I'm just another elf in the alienage. Are you feeling lost here, Meryl? A bit. But... I'll adjust. I'm glad you came by. I needed someone to talk to. Okay. I think Meryl is feeling a little bit homesick, but uh, she seems to have an upbeat attitude here. All right, so I think I'm going to call that uh, a chapter right there. And so uh, when we pick it up next time, we'll deal with some missions that have to do with another theme. And that theme will be the Cunari. So until that time, fellow adventurers, take care. <laughs>